Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 3A of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 72, and the question I'm going to do is number 12. It reads as follows. Factorize 7t squared minus 20t minus 500, and then it has b. It says a cannon fires a cannonball from the top of a cliff, which is 350 meters above sea level, with initial velocity 10 i hat plus 14 j hat meters per second. Find the distance from the foot of the cliff when it hits the sea. So once again, as normal, we've defined gravity at negative 9.81 meters per second squared at a direction as so. We've defined our xy, or Cartesian plane, and also our unit vectors i hat and j hat. So the first thing we need to do is sketch the motion. And we're going to use, as normal, a velocity measured in meters per second, time, gra time graph measured in seconds, t measured in seconds. So in this case, we're actually above, um, in this case, we are above the above the ground. Now this is a velocity time diagram so just for clarity I'm also going to draw a position time diagram. And I'm going to call this position above the x-axis. So that's y measured in meters and this is t measured in s. And say there's 350 that started above the ground. And what's going to happen is it's the how do I draw this? Right, the, posi the position. How will this? Let me just think there for a second. The position. Yeah, it looks something like this, and this will look something like this. Now you might ask yourself, why is this starting here and this starting here? The reason is because this is distance, this is the position, and this is just a velocity. So this one will always stay the same. But uh, if you want, you can just do this one here. It makes no difference really. All right. I hope it didn't really confuse the issue. They're two different diagrams. If you draw them, you'll find that, that it does make sense. I'm just going to get rid of this. So let's start with the normal things here. We know that uh, we want to be able to factorize part A, which is, let me see, it's 7t squared. That's 20t plus minus 500. Now, once again, this is a polynomial because it's got powers and remember this is t to the naught because that's equal to 1 so it's 2 t to the 1 t to the 0 it's a polynomial of degree 2 so it's called a quadratic and how you solve a quadratic is using the formula minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a and of course once again, not teaching you how to suck eggs, but this is a plus 7, minus 20 is b, and minus 500 is c. So let's do that. So we'll go minus b, so that's minus times minus 20, plus or minus something over 2 times 7. I don't like writing this square root, so I'm just going to do it here. b squared is minus 20 squared minus 4 times 7 times minus 500 I square root that 120 now if you look at this we're trying to find uh, well, actually it doesn't say t, it actually doesn't say what t is equal to so there are two numbers here we're going to get we're going to get 20 plus 120 over 14 or 20 minus 120 over 14 so let's just do that so one of them is 10, one of them is equal to 7.14, minus 7.14 like that. Is that correct? Let me just find out. So what's the back of the book? 3A question 11. 12, excuse me. 50 over 7 and 10. Yes, we're correct. Now, the thing about this is, if it, I know that this is just an, an equation, but if this was actually time, if t stood for time, then this, you would reject the solution because it says it's negative, and we, we do not, negative time, as far as we know anyway, it doesn't exist. So yeah, that's part A done. That was pretty straightforward. Personally, by the way, I don't use the bracket method. It doesn't work all the time. So I would suggest, I would suggest that you do not do that. But it's your call. So part B, anyway, 
just let's talk about the x-axis and y-axis and do our uvast as normal so what do we know we're given in the question that the particle fires off at 10, 10 v sub x 14 or u sub x and u sub y a sub x is equal to 0 a sub y is equal to g t is equal to t and that's it so we'll use the usual format, this is the exact same as I've always been doing, V is equal to U plus AT, giving 10 and 14T. And S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared, giving 10T. And 14T plus a half GT squared. Alright, now, we need to take into account the fact that this thing has started above the x-axis. So... The distance above the y-axis, everything is plus 350. All right. And the reason you say that is this part of the equation says that the, the that that will work out the height, assuming that your particle begins at the other on the ground. It didn't, so we add 350 to everything. All right. So what are we asked to do in the question? Find the distance from the foot of the cliff when the ball hits the sea. So when does it hit the C? If it hits the C, then its height is equal to uh, is equal to zero. We'll say. So you want to find the time when the height is equal to zero. So s sub y is equal to zero is equal to fourteen t plus g over two t squared plus three fifty like that. So that is equal to twenty eight t minus 9.81 t squared plus 700 now we'll just rearrange that so we'll have that's equal to 9.81 t squared minus 28 t minus 700 like so and in the same way it's part a we're going to use the same formula minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared over b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So we're going to have minus minus 28. We're going to have plus or minus the square root, which I'm going to do in a second, over 2 times 9.81. What's that about? 19, I suppose it is. By the way, my, my, my arithmetic is terrible, so I rarely do something in the uh, not on the cal calculator. All right. So let's do the square root in the calculator. So it's minus b, which is minus 28. Minus b, excuse me, that's that's terrible. Minus 28 squared b squared minus 4. A is 9.81. And c is equal to negative 700. Square root that we get 168 hmm, that doesn't make sense, I didn't do that correct, did I? Oh, B squared, excuse me, 28, that's correct, no that's correct excuse me, just having a bit of a, a slow day I, I suppose you could say Anyway, let's just work this out. Now we're getting a time, so one of these is going to be negative and one of these is going to be positive. Of course, we don't need the negative one, so I'm just going to say 28 plus 168 divided by 19.62 give me a time of t is equal to 9.9 .9 seconds. Alright, 9.9 .9 seconds, or 10 seconds we'll say, let's call it 10 altogether. So what we're trying to do now is find the distance or the range at t is equal to 10. So what's the formula for the range? It's 10t. Therefore, it's 10 times 10 is equal to 100. That's correct. So that was reasonably straightforward. Thanks for watching. Pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.